here. And once that is done, we will start. Good evening, everyone. It's starting to be a tradition for Ahmed and myself to be here in front of you, trying to keep these ladies and gentlemen to our left in front of you to uh, answer and not ask too many questions because we don't have that much time. We are running late. But as I said yesterday, if you're very much at home, it's like being in Brazil. We uh, will be asking a total of 29 questions, but they will be divided in several ways of answering. So it will be much more than that, and we have officially 75 minutes in front of us according to the program, and we are starting a little bit late. To the panelists, some of the questions don't have an evidence-based answer so it's really what you do that the team that has devised the questions would like to know. If any of the questions is so unclear to you that you just don't understand what it means, then raise your hand. But otherwise, please abstain from any further comments because we just need to run through all of this exercise. And at the end, we'll have the pleasure to listen to the final words of this meeting from our fantastic organizer, Hesham. So, Ahmed, any further words? I'd like to stress again, there is no, some, you know, quite a few number of questions has no right answers. We would like to see what is the current practice. The answers, uh, you know, the true answers uh, helps us a lot in uh, defining the practice and going forward. Uh, we hope we'll finish on time and thank you very much for being here. I think it's a lovely practice and I hope it will continue. Okay, it's, everything seems to be set. It, we hope it will not break down in the midway, but we'll see what happens. Question number one. All patients with invasive breast cancer should be tested for HER2 status, whatever the stage. Yes, no, abstain. We are very generous. We give you 20 seconds to vote. Okay, next question. HER2 status should be reported based on uh, immunohistochemistry for every patient, fish slash uh, SISH for every patient, or immunohistochemistry, then uh, fish or SISH if immunohistochemistry is plus two. So we'll start with the... Uh, yeah? The first one is for IHC, yes, no, for every patient, of course, or abstain. Excuse me, this is uh, three questions. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Three and one, yeah. Yeah, yes, they are independent from each other. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. so next is fish or fish for every patient. The same, yes, no, or abstain. And uh, the last one is if immunohistochemistry is plus two, you do fish uh, or fish.
Okay, very good. Question number three. Labs that carry over HR2 testing should be accredited and have standardized testing procedures. Yes, no, abstain, please vote. Okay, that's the highest figure we had so far. Uh, question number four. IHC plus three is defined as uniform membrane staining in 10% or more of tumor cells for equivocal results with fish or fish. That's a very tricky question. For these patients, what do you do? So we start with the first option. You retest, uh, retesting should be done, yes, no, or abstain. I hope the question is clear. No. It's not clear, right? That's so. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, uh, Professor Matty Abrock commented first, if you have immunohistochemistry chemistry plus three, why do you do fish to start with? So that's, you know, one, one of the points. Okay, so about 60% think that we should retest. Uh, should you consider this as a positive result? So we are talking about immunohistochemistry plus three and equivocal fish. Okay, 70% believes HIC and should be considered as negative. We expect the vis versa then. Okay. <laughs> Can we have a comment from, uh, from, from uh, our pathologist for, for this, uh, for the sake of the audience uh, grasping? You mind? Go ahead. Uh, if immunohistochemistry is strongly positive and you're sure of your internal controls and quality control measures, it should be taken for granted that it is positive. Fish being equivocal is just not as, as strong because what we look for is protein, and protein does the action. Thank you very much. Very important comment. And indeed, I was wondering why are we doing this for and uh, immunohistochemistry 3 plus when we just stated that the lab should be certified and know what it is doing. I'd like uh, to ask all of you to vote. You are more than 24, 25 that I see voting. If you don't know the answer, don't want to vote or anything, just press abstain, press C, but all of you should press the button. If you don't do that, I have a tricky system there that by the third time you don't press, you'll be ejected. <laughs> Okay, question number five. It's about DCIS. Question five is, there's no need for routine assessment of HER2 status in DCIS as it doesn't affect the treatment decision. Yes, no, abstain. Yes, no, need. No, yes, no. no need. Yes is no need. Question number six, when new adjuvant strategy uh, is decided in HER2 positive breast cancer, anti-HER2 agent should be, should be included. Yes, no, or abstain? No, this is not no, 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 this is invasive cancer.
Wow. Still, we are missing three voters, by the way. Last time, two, now three. Yeah? Okay, question number seven. When new adjuvant treatment is considered, trastuzumab can be combined with taxanes or anthracycline divided in two parts. Question 7a, taxanes, yes, no, abstain. I was expecting your question, Nagy, so we will have a double vote at the next questions. This is about taxanes, concurrent or not, we are not asking the question here. Yeah. Go ahead, just say taxanes, yes, no, abstain. Okay, so this is no big deal. Someone said no. Interesting to know why. Question 7b, anthracycline. So now we will divide and we'll have a vote two times. Question 7b, anthracycline. Anthracycline is given at the same time as trastuzumab. Yes, no, abstain. Concurrently, Concurrently at the same time. Wrong question. They should specify. No, 29. No, 28. Okay, now anthracyclines can be given sequentially when HER2 is not being, the anti-HER2 is not being given. So let's have a re-vote. We have to vote this question again. Okay, so anthracyclines, not concurrently, sequentially. sequentially. Okay, is there anyone in the panel who'd like to make a comment because we know that there have some uh, colleagues there that do use concurrent intracycline and trastuzumab because they believe in some of the data of some recent studies showing that there might not be a problem even though you might make some comments about that. Anyone wants to comment? Dr. Nihad, I expected you. You'd like to comment. Yeah. I think, I think uh, to say anthracycline is wrong because uh, it applies to adriamycin but not epirubicin. You can give anthracycline with epirubicin. It is safe. You cannot give it with adriamycin because it's not safe. Okay. If we have, uh, if we have the chance of having a manuscript out, it will be very interesting to make these comments and discuss about this. Thank you very much. So now we go to question eight. That's yours. Dual anti-HER2 agent can be used in the neoadjuvant setting in combination with chemotherapy in all patients, high-risk patients, or clinical trials only. So we'll start with the first option, dual anti-HER2 for all patients in HER2 positive disease. Neoadjuvant, of course. Okay, that's interesting. So the same dual anti-HER2 uh, in the age of a setting for high-risk patients only. Please. Right, and the last option in a clinical trial setting only. Which we don't have here so far, so.
Gunther, you want to comment about this? Okay, anyone would like to yeah. comment on? No, I want uh, Gunther to comment about this. It's okay. But it's always uh, the wording of the questions. If you ask can in all, then you get uh, uh, many green positive answers, which are, which are also watered. But if you would have asked sure. must in all, sure. then you would have got uh, only probably no yes. And here it says it asks um, only in clinical trials. Why, why that? So are we the, I kind of agree with the answer. The answer only in clinical trials, I did not ask the panel who decided to put these questions forward why. But I do understand that in some countries these drugs are not available and not reimbursed, so therefore this could be one of the answers. Of course, we do have the evidence for the activity, and it has been accepted by the recommendations of different panels. You are right. Uh, the way you ask the question between must and can can make a difference. If you want to revote with the question must, we could go back to question 8A. Can we go back to question 8A? So, question is now modified. Dual anti-HR2 blockade should be used in the neoadjuvant setting in all patients. That's, that is a, a must sure. be used. All patients, yes, no, abstain. There are three people who have not pushed the button. Okay, so this then is a better way to ask the question. Thank you very much, Gunther, because it then reflects the answer B that you had, which said in some patients at high risk. Okay, so let's move now to question number nine. Matty, what do you mean by high risk? Well, I, uh, I was surprised that no one asked the question, why yeah, high risk, because when... Uh, I discussed or these ER with Ahmed. Negative. He said, what is high risk? And I said, we don't want to go into this discussion because it would take forever. <laughs> so we can take it in manuscript. I do hope we will have a nice manuscript out of this. Can we put it ER negative and ER positive? That's more... The, more this is one way of looking at risk. The other way of looking at risk is, of course, 7 millimeters in the adjuvant. In Germany, they give new adjuvant to everyone, don't you? So you might want to start discussing this. <laughs> but I will not go into this debate. Sivilla, thank you for laughing. Okay, question number nine. Dual anti-HCR2 agents can be used alone, i.e. without chemotherapy, in the new adjuvant setting in, and we'll have three parts, old age, patient preference, only in clinical trials. Question 9A. I think we say patients who are refusing chemo here. Yes. So 9A, old age. No chemo, yes. only dual blood So you're saying otherwise completely healthy patients. Yeah. Yes, a completely healthy, has no contraindication for chemotherapy, but for God knows what reason, decide that age is determinant. Yes, no, abstain. How about the receptor status of these patients? HER2 positive, ER negative, 95 years old. Okay, let's have a vote. <laughs> okay, this says yes, no, no, yes, and we will debate in the future manuscript. Excellent. And the question number 9B. So the patient says, I do not want chemotherapy. My cousin had problems with chemotherapy. I don't want it. I love antibodies. So, yes, no, abstain. Okay, of course, patient preference has to be taken into account. Thank you very much. And last question, 9C. Dual blockade without chemotherapy only in clinical trials, yes, no, abstain.
Okay, fine. We'll not make any further comments. And we go to question 10. Sorry. So question 10, when dual anti hair 2 regimen is considered in the adjuvant setting, the recommended combination is one of three choices. Trastuzumab, pertuzumab, trastuzumab, lapatinib, pertuzumab, TDM1. We will start with the first one. Trastuzumab, pertuzumab. Yes, we are 29 now. Okay, not surprising. Second option, trastuzumab, lapatinib. Okay. The 37, you know, 38 percent does not correspond to the uh, percentage we had with trastuzumab, pertuzumab. So apparently it's a choice uh, for some of colleagues. Last one is, I think, the easy one, pertuzumab TDM1. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we had a strategy for any yes, but hopefully, you know, good it was zero. Okay, next question. Strategy was very simple. Anyone who had voted yes at the last question would have been ejected from the panel immediately. <laughs> okay, question 11. In the adjuvant settings, trastuzumab can be combined with taxanes or entracycline. We will not go into the debate about Simultaneous uh, anthracycline. We'll assume that this means that it is sequential. So, first part, 11a, trastuzumab, taxanes, and uh, trastuzumab, yes, no, abstain. Okay, 11B, anthracycline, sequential, yes, no, abstain. Fine. Yes. Yes, yes, we did. The, you know, the usual chemotherapy. Uh, yeah, nothing surprising, actually. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, question number 12. In HER2 positive patient in adjuvant setting, uh, TH protocol is preferred over anthracycline containing regimen with consideration to efficacy and long-term side effects in T1B, T1C, and zero tumors, early disease, low-risk patients. Again, uh, the question is, what is the lower risk than what is mentioned up? Uh, old age and old patients. So we'll take them one by one. So non-anthracycline uh, treatment in T1B, T1C, and zero tumors. Yes, no, or abstain. Yes. Or docetaxel. Taxanes and herceptin. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, one did not vote. Second, uh, you should vote. We know that. Okay. <laughs> uh, added, no, 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 we counted the number two. Uh, okay, now for low risk patients. Yes, no, abstain. No, yeah. we, yes. we did not yet. Please, uh, yeah. Okay, no, we go back to, no, no, back, back. back. No. You, you need to go back, please. Back. Back. back, one more only. Yes. Please. Whatever you take it as low risk, yeah. Uh, how it could be low risk and HER2 positive? Good question. Uh, It's, it's a lower risk than the higher risk in the same category. Does that satisfy you? <laughs> okay, see. And now, old age. So you avoid anthracyclines in elderly people. Yes, no, or abstain. who are otherwise healthy. Mm, interesting. And last one for all patients. You can avoid anthracyclines. I believe analyzing the answers will be a challenging exercise, yeah, yeah. No. Okay, okay, thank you. Next. You will realize that we did not ask the question about uh, the BCRG 006.